importance to the fight for gay and transgender rights were, until recently, largely overlooked. During my part in the gay movement this year. She was fondly known as St. Marcia, assigned male at her 1945 birth in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Johnson started wearing clothes made for girls when she was five. Cross-dressing was a crime in New York State, and Johnson was sometimes arrested simply for wearing makeup in public. Even though the bohemian enclave of Greenwich Village, where Johnson lived, was the focal point of the city's gay life, police still routinely raided gay bars there. During a late-night June 1969 raid on the Stonewall Inn, patrons fought back, and the modern gay rights movement in America was born. Three people in the drag queens were the vanguard of the movement. Stonewall... Marsh and I fought the cops off. We were in the street turning out cars. The movement started the next day. Johnson, who was 23 at the time, has wrongly been credited with throwing the first brick of the uprising. She said she didn't arrive at the scene until after the chaos had begun. One of the many transgender women on the front lines that night, because, they said, they had nothing left to lose. Johnson may not have started the Stonewall riot, but for decades to come, she was a key player in the LGBTQ plus rights movement that it sparked, even as many gay and lesbian groups marginalized transgender people. You never completely have your rights. One person chose all have your rights. I was there when they pulled her up. Marsha was so full of life. Marsha P. Johnson is the Rosa Parks of the LGBT movement. Throwing up on my gay rights now! Remembrance, honoring those in the transgender community who have lost their lives to acts of hate. Human Rights Campaign has just released their fatal violence report, which recorded the deaths of 33 transgender and gender nonconforming people in the U.S. since this day last year. What I mean by privilege is that all of these things happen in my life when they happen to allow me to walk in here to right live now. as a woman right. in society so and, and feel comfortable. Something else that stands out to me is the violence in which these folks were killed. Devastatingly uh, disrespectful ways. I mean, it, it is possible to die with dignity, but when we're seeing people who are shot and stabbed multiple times simply because of who, we, who they are and who we are, it's absolutely heartbreaking. And it really speaks to uh, the hatred, the misinformation, and also the disinformation that people have about who transgender people are and who we are. Not be judged and discriminated against. Right. Trans women of color, black trans women and trans women of color are the highest, have the highest rate of murder and rape of any other minority in America. And there's so much hatred out there and it makes no sense. And I wonder to myself, like, how can someone be that angry? about somebody else's identity. With longtime friend Sylvia Rivera, also a transgender woman, Johnson founded STAR, Street Transvestites Action Revolutionaries. Hi, baby! Trans women are routinely, brutally beaten, raped, yeah. drugged, murdered in so many states, and I think including ours, it's even a accepted legal defense called trans panic. We provide a sad update. Uh, you've reported 33, and that's where we were yesterday. And sadly, just this morning, we've upped the number to 34. Uh, Two million of us in the country who identify as trans and non-binary. So 34 people doesn't sound like a lot, but when you consider that there may be 2 million of us, every single death is incredibly impactful. I tried to fight for the effect changes or to become women of the women's generation. And they right door, not the women's group. They do not like women. They do not like men. They like star. Because we're trying to do something for them. Folks who just don't know trans people, we're just like everyone else. Do you do anything for them? No. You all tell me to go and hide my tail between my legs. I will not no longer put up with this I have been beaten. I have had my nose broken. I have been thrown in jail. I have lost my job. I have lost my apartment for gay liberation. And you all treat me this way? What the wrong with you all? Think about that. In 1992, Johnson's body was pulled from the Hudson River. Police first called it suicide, then reclassified it as undetermined, and in 2012 reopened the case, which remains unsolved.
She was 46 years old. And if I die, I hope nobody cried, you know. Get up and dance, party, and have a good time. Uh I want to say thank you to Nina for being honest enough to share her story. She could have very easily been closed off to that, but she was receptive from day one, you know, that I talked to her about it. And um, obviously her story is one that I love to share with everyone just because I find it to be amazing that she's able to walk around and be as brave as she is and not only just brave a testament to being who we are and it, being heard and being strong and brave while we do it you know what I mean being a person that not, not only is consistent with with being confident but persevere through every storm that passed you know what I mean and still able to hold their head high I find her to be in it an inspiration and you're very kind to allow me to make these videos regarding something so personal so it's amazing and thank you very much it's it doesn't go unnoticed thank you so much and happy birthday is this a movie it's a movie trying to showcase showcase real life events but that it's replay they're trying it. to make it out to be where it's bad to be yes trans. this the last scene it's will show you oh my god so what? literally this is propaganda against, it's such propaganda against gender Yo, affirming tell healthcare me, for tell, children tell me that movie hold on hold on right oh my god they have it sponsored the top lobbyism Propaganda. They literally. they got it sponsored. Like yo, like this is fear factor. You this know what's crazy though? They it's, picked and choose. I skipped to this ad one time, and then you know where they played it on our video. I'm pretty sure. Oh my god! And I didn't realize what they were saying. And that's I just like skipped up. it. And then, but here's the thing: is like. It's like a big, it's so it's a big deal to me because it's like, why did, this is the very first thing that's Why showed. did they choose that's it. our video? Why did they choose our video? Put this, that's exactly which right. Which is against our yes. video. Well, I know, I have, well, I confused. never thought, I never thought about it, but I guess I have to go into settings and Google AdSense and I have to turn off ads for like anything related to, I guess, gender or like something. I'm, I have to because like they're, they are put, including these things. Do you know what I mean? That's so messed up. So they are paying to have these commercials, whoever they are. Like, who are they? This government? Like, who is this people? Who is they? Because they're pissing me off. They're pissing Why me did too. they make this? Why, Why did they make this? Look, this is the most whole video. I swear to God. It honestly made me so mad when I was watching it. I was like, oh my God, this is like, this is scary. Actually, I know I'm laughing, but I'm uncomfortable. It's like scary. Seriously. Oh, that's a train. Oh, insane. Oh, my God. Oh, Lucy, so much. Hands. Oh, Leave us him. This is the most important question. Why are they all doing this? You know, I wouldn't be comfortable if I had to call you she. You were like, it's totally fine. Yeah. That's the least. That's the least of the things. Yeah. But I'm going to call you Brianna because I'm saying that's your name. I am. I'm very happy to call you Brianna. And um, as I said, I changed my name when I got married. You changed your name. You're now Brianna. And... So I want the focus of this conversation to just be really respectful. Yeah, she said she interfered. That's why I ended it. That's why I ended it right there. Because she just literally disrespected the hell out of that person. Like, literally. Literally. Like, just dis... That was the plain, most disrespectful thing I've ever heard. You know? I'm in shock. Imagine somebody going up to her and saying, like, I don't feel comfortable referring to you as, you know, she... You know what I'm saying? Like, imagine if some man came up to her or a woman or anybody, for that it's matter. Like, I don't feel comfortable referring to a she. Right. Exactly. Why? But why is that person sitting, that trans person sitting there and entertaining that foolishness? Because money. I guess money. I guess money. The Daily Wire was, was paying for that podcast that they did together. The Daily Wire? Yes. Oh my God! The be between Candace Owens and um, that was that 
woman I was just showing you. She's very famous on YouTube. And we're together That's anyways. And we're together anyways. It's supposed to be. We are. We are. You know what I'm saying? We are. We are. But y'all out there, y'all need to get on this wavelength. There, I'm just, there are certain people that need to see this. You know what I'm saying? And there are certain people that need to see this and be reminded. Hey, I'm not going to name names here. I'm just going to name events. Last year, in 2023, there was a really, really big scandal with Bud Light. And I'm sure we all remember that, you know, and I'm sure you all are thinking of the name right now that was the person that was transgender and was the face of Bud Light. And it ultimately led to Bud Light losing or over a billion dollars in sales. But what I found to be quite disturbing about the story was how much people cared that there was a transgender person on the cans of these Bud Lights whenever she really does drink that beer, it seemed. Um, I know that she got paid to do that campaign, but I also believe that she probably didn't even realize um, that that was going to cause such a controversy. We'll say one thing, Bud Light knows who their consumers are, and they knew. They knew people, if they were going to like it or not, and if you think that the woman that they blamed is to blame, you are crazy. Because they, if you don't think Bud Light knows what's going up on the television when they're paying for it, they're paying millions and on top of millions and millions of dollars, you think one person is in charge of who's going to go up there and represent all of Bud Light. You think they made thousands of cans of beer and they didn't know whose face was going to be plastered all over it. Interesting. You know what I mean? If you do think that that's how it plays, interesting way of thinking. I don't agree, but, you know, whatever. Um, I think they knew. Or if they didn't know, they wanted to see. And I think it's a part of a bigger testament here. You know what I mean? For it's obvious. This is obviously just my way of thinking. Think however you want to think about it. This is just a conspiracy, obviously. I don't know this for sure, but I, I think it's quite obvious that it was almost like a social experiment. I don't think that the person that was involved knew they were involved, however. I think they were just doing what they were wanting to do, and they didn't really think much about it. And it was just one of those, you know, moments for them to shine, you know what I mean? And it turned into something horrible because I'm sure that person felt terrible about themselves. Can you imagine having so much hate on you? And um, not even just America, but all around the world. I saw people on YouTube that represented and live in Australia. <clears throat> there were newscasters in Australia talking about this person. It's like the whole world has something to say about you and it's not pleasant it's not polite it's the opposite it's actually like horrific things and refused to call you by what she is you know what i mean she's a transgender woman and that's the truth of it believe it or not people you know she's a human too she has feelings if we really look at that situation i look back on that and i think to myself that is embarrassing for the human race like Jesus Christ, do we care that much about what whatever whoever is wearing and wants to be represented as? You want to wake up every morning and you want to feel just as good as anybody else does. You want to feel accepted. You want to put on your clothes. You want to you want to feel how you want to feel, right? You want to wake up and you want to be presented how you want to be presented, just like anybody else does, okay? And just because you don't understand what somebody else is going through doesn't necessarily mean that it's not happening. It's still going to happen regardless, okay? So if these people feel this way, you know, let them feel this way. What is the big deal? I don't understand. I'm not talking about you know, athletics, and I'm not talking about, um, I'm not going to go into all that, you know what I mean, I'm not going to all these different levels to it, okay, my point here is, it's propaganda that we're seeing people wake up, wake up, the way that Blair White talked about I Am Jazz, I don't know if she's right or wrong, but it definitely makes people's heads turn, you know what I'm saying, it makes people wonder, is she right? You know what I mean? Because I am jazz. There was a lot of talk about that. And, you know, it sounds like 
a really depressing story whenever you hear Blair White sit there and just bash her family. It's just a mockery of an entire group of people and it's sad and it makes even gay people look stupid too because when you think about it, and I've seen it firsthand like looking online at all this stuff, gay people straight up booing Sylvia like that. I forgot her last name but um, you know Marsha P. Johnson's friend that they I showed in the beginning of this video who was at that rally and they just booed her off this you know wanting to boo this woman off the stage. Because why? Because she's trans? She's the only reason why the place was packed full of people in the first place and that there was a movement going on in general. Oh my god, people, wake the f*** up. These people out here don't know, I don't think. And I think people need to be reminded um, or they just have never ever known. Like I personally didn't know these things until I watched the Marsha P. Johnson movie. I've even searched about Marsha P. Johnson and I didn't, I didn't even get as much information out of the internet as I did watching that documentary. Ignorant not to know. You know what I mean? And obviously that's my bad. I just never really thought about it. But I am ashamed because like honestly there's a really really big reason why we're even we're even able to group together they used to ha they literally used to have police come to the gay bars come raid these gay bars that's sick there's like a revolution and stuff it's really good to know about i don't know if you don't want to know about it you don't want to know about it but hey i'm just here to inform you on what i know and what i know is, is this is a crock of that ha has played out honestly and there's so much hatred out there and it makes no sense and i wonder to myself like how can someone be that angry about somebody else's identity and it really comes down to being humane really we're being inhumane people seriously these people are dying lastly i just want to say the same person that did the bud light campaign that failed miserably right is the person they put in front of the president. This is a fresh face last year that came up. I just wonder to myself sometimes, why is it that that person was the person they put up in front of our president after that failed Bud Light campaign? I just wonder, because there's real activists out here that are actually like political and stuff like that and they could actually sit in front of our president. He even mentioned one of them being a, a senator of the state of Delaware. Why couldn't that person be the one we're talking to? Because everybody's talking about this one person from TikTok. Hope you enjoy this video. One night, um, years ago, a few years ago, when I was little, I, I was in a truck with Randy and you know Tess, you know Tess, you know Tess is? No. Well, it's Fallon's girlfriend. Fallon. Okay. Yeah, Fallon. Yeah. And I did, I, I, I was curious because I don't, she's, I guess, a lesbian, in a lesbian relationship with lesbian, right? I'm like, I'm by curious I'm in, and they started that they said no you're not by curious she like you're you? just curious I didn't know what by curious meant I thought it meant I was curious I didn't know it meant I, was, I, I didn't know it meant I was I was gay curious or whatever okay. crazy is what I am be honest with you but, it runs you know, in our family all the yeah, best people it don't are. run at Gallup's it's fine though right right but I think so. I, I'm <laughs> curious but not by curious but I'm curious I might turn by curious before the night's over not kidding <laughs> but we love Nina and I just have you. questions, and, and I'm curious. Nina, and I'm sure there's a lot of people that are. Oh, yeah, there, there's a lot of people that are curious about what's going on. Nina's a superstar, obviously. Uh, she is our most watched video. Really? She's number one. The one of you me and you? That was fun. I loved that. that the, was, first was, the first one, yeah. I watched the first, watched the first one. Yeah. You know what? You were what? I was getting heated in that video. You were? I felt like I was getting mad. Yeah. No, I'm just like, oh. about. Oh, you were, too, oh, you were getting Because I was talking it. about. Yeah things that were happening in the world and you had never yeah. you told me that you had never really like I was spoke. nervous too really mm -hmm. I was nervous we I all just met, thought right? I seemed nervous I had just ubered her it's the first time yeah. I had ever been like on a podcast but yeah. any kind of like podcast or anything and now like she that. just gets I'm right sure you in. love she, it now though. I love it yeah. it's my favorite it's my favorite too I look forward to doing I know, this we love it. I think it's fun when we do it mm. and I'm thankful I have an outlet and yeah. a voice because of yeah. that yeah 
Yeah. And honestly, and you need like, that. I was so grateful that you even wanted to like be friendly to me. You know what I mean? Like I have Ubers I to that are friends. I, I can see Nina would be friendly, friendly with anybody to be her friend. I really that did. would be friends with her. Yeah, wouldn't I'm she? Like that. She's a friendly person. She is friendly. She would be friends with anybody, but she well, knows good people. And she I sees think she takes a lot of Ubers, though. I take a lot of Ubers. And uh, how many I of them are your friends? Only William. For no. all the Ubers, William is always. Yeah, I love that she calls him William too. I, I know for a fact that God's put Nina in my life for a oh, reason. Yeah, no like doubt. God's seen oh, it. I love you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, my high group hug, everybody. Okay. <laughs> what, what do you say when you. I'm a trans woman. Trans woman. Yes. Okay, so whenever I, Will told me about her, I didn't. I, I'd never. I, Met, but like I never me. talked to anybody. A lot of times, I'm the first trans woman that people have met in yeah. this area you're of the country. And um, yeah. it's funny because I go about my day to day life, and yeah. people, unless I tell them, most of the time they don't know. Yeah, you can't and that's know. that's a good thing for yeah. my safety. Yeah, and that's why my mama and my nana fought so hard for me to be able to transition when I was so young. I'm sorry about it, but like, if she would have never told me, mm. I would have never known. For a long time, because I had this ex-best friend, he was like my gay best friend for years. He took me to my first bar ever. There's only two in our town. And so for years, whenever I went out, which wasn't very often until this year, I would go out with him. And I didn't realize, you know, I was going out because I was like, oh my gosh, I want to be a part of my community. I want to be accepted right, as, right. because that's like, that's what it's a blessing and a curse that I look this way because I feel like sometimes I don't know where I fit in. Right. Yeah. Like, I don't go to straight bars because I'm not going to flirt with guys it's there or they're going to flirt what, with me because yeah. I'll have to have this conversation with them. And right. then that opens up avenues of danger yeah, and does. stuff like that. So I go, I would go to the gay bar and I'm like, oh my God, yeah, I'm with my people. They had no idea that I was a trans woman. Right. They just yeah. thought I was his straight white girl, yeah. you know, a little homegirl. Because home girl. Looks like so wonderful. I just didn't know. You didn't because know in my brain, even then. I look in the mirror and in my, and this is part of what is the medical aspect of transgender. The reason why we transition is called because of something called gender dysphoria. So what it's when mean? it's it. gender dysphoria is a medical condition. It's like in the psychology books and everything. And it's when it's negative feelings caused by the gender that I have on the inside, not matching the gender that I have on the outside. I'll look in the mirror mm -hmm. and, or I'll look at myself in a photograph and even like on some of the videos, like really? it's hard for me to watch it sometimes oh. because I see myself, like I look at myself and I'm like, oh my God, I look oh, no. like a man. I just assume that people can tell. No. No, they can't. They so, cannot. but my logical side of my brain tells me that people can't tell. Yeah. Right. But it's, that's the, med that's the yeah, medical, the that. mental illness yeah. type side of it. So for years I was going to the bars and I was like, oh my God, yeah, I'm with my people. No one knew. Until this year I made new friends and yeah. I started going out a lot and introducing myself. And I just tell everyone, I'm like, hey, I'm Nina, I'm trans. And yeah. And then funny. they're like, what? I know. Yeah. Even the gay, all the gay guys in there, they're like, what? And so now I have, I have yeah, okay. they've all been receptive that I know of. Feel like I can be myself and yeah. be accepted and like be a part of the community. And well, I've even met a couple other trans girls. So I've had an easy journey mm -hmm. because I was blessed. I'm very blessed that even though my mom and my grandma are both passed away, they weren't with me for very long but in knew. my life. They supported me while they were here, and as soon as they found out, like. My therapist and me, well, as soon as I figured out that I was trans, because I felt this way my whole yeah, life. Yeah, so what? How were you when you realized? Or, or my entire out? life, I felt this way. You always felt in like fact, a girl trapped in a boy's body, right? Yeah, and I honestly didn't have a problem with my body until society told me I couldn't look like this and act like this Be the girl because of my body. And I told and her, that's when I started having issues. Whenever and I you was, first said okay. that, I was saying how I think everybody else around you is more confused than you are because you're, you're yeah, just, yeah, you're like, yeah. like I remember, it's like, you know, you know what I'm saying, I remember that, my mom that. telling me that when I was like, just learning how to talk, I learned how to talk when I was four, I was, I didn't talk until I was four, I learned sign language before I learned how to talk, mm -hmm. they thought I, they diagnosed me with autism mm -hmm. when I was four, because, three, because I wouldn't talk and I wouldn't make eye contact and I was always a little bit different, 
but my mom would ask me, are you a boy or are you a girl? And I'd be like, I'm a girl. And then she'd be like, no, you're not. You're a boy. And then my father or the person that I thought was my father abused me during my childhood. In Sexually many, or physically? All different ways. Oh my God. And Sad. anytime that, like, my Nana, my grandma, mm -hmm. the one who named me, my mom's mom, she bought me a pair of sparkly Scooby Doo shoes. They were like green and blue and sparkly. I love Scooby Doo too. <laughs> and as soon as he saw me wearing them, he beat me. Oh my God. So he, that went on for like that sexual and physical and mental abuse went on for about four or five years until he went to prison. Good. And he went to prison when I was eight or nine. And for then I went to no, no, for other things. Because. Well, it goes on from jail. Yeah. Yeah, long story, but um, I went to go live with my mother and my grandmother full time, and my mother was ill, so she was disabled, and she we were on welfare and food stamps and everything like that. And but when I was at, whenever I was at my mom and my grandma's house, I could do the art that I love to do. I could my nana let me play dress up in her yeah. clothes, any type of toy that I wanted, whether it was for a boy or a girl. My right. nana let me get right. it. I it's like it was me. like me with the wigs. Yeah, yeah. Oh, when he was little, when I was little, crazy. Kid. Was I like buying was, wigs. You told me. Yeah. Did you oh, tell me about yeah. the hair yeah. Montana wigs? Yeah. They got to look at me. They told me not. I don't think. I would they make. Did. They told me not to do that. Kid. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I would yes. make like pillowcase oh. dresses, all this stuff. Now my mother didn't understand. She was an educated woman. She was a teacher and stuff, and she had had gay friends during her lifetime, but. The person I thought was my father was gay or bi. One of those and that's why he oppressed me because he couldn't accept the fact within himself that he was gay. So, so he anytime he saw any type of femininity in me, he took it out on me. Now, my mom, whenever she, when I started getting a little bit older and she started seeing me being more feminine and expressing more feminine things, it concerned her because she didn't want me to have a hard life. Yeah. So, and she apologized later after I transitioned about this and everything, but she put me in Boy Scouts, made me go in Boy Scouts. Oh, she was trying to make you a boy. She was trying to make me a boy, and it didn't work. Yeah. I right. was like, no. So you think you were now, you were, you I didn't were know. Just, At this time, I still had these feelings, but I didn't know what trans was. So this was 10 plus years ago. It wasn't talked about back right. then. Right. And, and I'm from it's Texas. It's just now starting to get talked about. Yeah. And, and I'm, from, like I'm from Texas, yeah. and... My mother and my nana were both raised Southern Baptist. Mm -hmm. They were very godly women. They weren't exposed to anything like that. Had no idea what that was. Had no idea what that was. I had no idea what that was. So when I was why about I said the confusion yeah. about society, society just doesn't even feel like yeah. Very, you know what I mean. So I found YouTube. Right. YouTube helped me a lot. Now I still didn't understand a lot, but I started getting really into makeup and wanting to wear girls' clothes. My mom was like, you're a boy. I was like, well, I'm gay. So yeah. I came out as gay first. Yeah. See, but I thought that meant, oh, I can just wear a girl's girl. clothes and makeup now. That's not That's what not gay it. is. Mm -hmm. And right. so whenever I was, my entire childhood, whenever I imagine, I don't know if you've ever done this, but when you're little and you daydream about the kind of grown-up you're going to be, you, you envision yourself as a grown-up. I, I always. Like married and. Yeah. You know, so. I always saw myself, the only thing I could imagine was. A pretty blonde lady as a doctor as a or as a wife and a mother or doing hair or a movie star yeah Man, it was always I a woman I was always a woman always I morning. could never imagine myself as a grown man I was already in therapy for like seven years and I didn't even ever tell my therapist these feelings about myself you never did yeah. never did I was that afraid wow. of it because even on YouTube mm -hmm. I just don't think it's like even on it's still hard for people to accept that but you have to well, understand it people so seen as so, like fringe I don't it wasn't think that mainstream. people are so yeah but even now even I feel now. like it's not talked about the, the way that it really no. is and 10 years ago it was just very very few creators on there that I could right. find I had the best therapist ever Miss Jeannie and she was like I told her and she was like hold on and she went and she grabbed a book off the shelf. It was the DSM-5. And that's the book that holds all of the medical diagnoses that are officially accepted by the American Psychology Association and mm -hmm. the American Association for Pediatrics wow. and everything like that. It's an official medical diagnosis book. She flipped through it and she found it. She was like, here you go. It's right here. And it Those used to be called Transgender Identity Disorder, but they changed it to Gender Dysphoria 
Because did that they changed it ten years ago. Oh, okay. They changed it because now they're seeing it as not a disorder like a mental illness would be, but it's just an anomaly in the human. Right, it's just right. a random thing that happens, kind of like ADHD or autism, right. or like anxiety, different but not less, right. less like anxiety. Okay. There's symptoms of anxiety that mm -hmm. come with it right. when it's untreated. But it's just seen as something that happens that can't be cured. Right. Yeah. The only cure or treatment for it is for the person to start living their as truth. their true gender. Yeah. The gender they have on the inside and to change their body to match the gender that they have on the inside. And for them to live in a gender role in society that's that, fits the, that fits their gender identity. And when she explained it to me, I started crying and I was like, oh my God, I thought that I was just an abomination. I didn't realize that this is, she was like, this is a thing. This is something. Yeah. Yeah. And, and she was like, I, Nina, I felt like I've been waiting for the day for you to tell me this. Really? Yeah, she said, I've been, she since knew. You, yeah, she knew. She but she wasn't going to, she's not going to push that on yeah. child. Yeah. She's like, That's I'm waiting for this important for you to say, she's, I feel like. Yeah. Because she, I've watched a lot of things on YouTube, of course, and you know, I just don't like the way they depict. I, I, I've seen a lot of, um, even, even trans people, like, Blair, for instance, mm -hmm. you know, um, it's not always looked at the way I feel like it, it really is. Um, before I met you, I knew two trans people, but they were um, men, or trans men. Yes. And so I never, you know, it was just, it's a lot different, I feel like. You know what I mean? Everyone's but, story is different. Right. But what I mean is... It's different, but not less. You know what I'm saying? Different, but not less, yeah. And like when I met you, I I realized like I never thought about it before. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so just meeting you and just I mean I don't know about you, but if you like I said, if I didn't tell you, if you, oh, yeah, you yeah. told he told me. Just well, I, I, met, I didn't believe him when I met. I'll get you. more. I thought into he was lying. Why that is? <laughs> like, too. I really thought he was lying. Is I well, like, a lot of people no do accuse me of lying. No, I thought he was lying. I thought he was lying. I thought he was That's happened before. He just was telling me that. I don't know why. That's it wouldn't lie to me, but it just because you're just beautiful. You, 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 you are because well, you, know, you are. As soon as my so my therapist told me, and she was like, "Are you ready to tell your parents?" And I was like, "Yes," because this is something that I cannot move forward in my life. Right. right. There is no other option, and I'm just gonna have to take it for how it is. And I already knew that my mother and my grandmother loved me more than anything yeah. in the world. Right. But so I child. was I was brave. Yeah, bravery be. is and uh, bravery is doing something that you're afraid of. Be bold. Being Always afraid. Be bold. Yeah. Right. It having courage and being yeah. brave and having bravery doesn't mean you're not afraid. It means you're afraid and you still face your fears and do it. Perseverance. Right. Exactly. So I felt a bravery. And um, my therapist brought my mom and my grandma in. Right. I explained to them how I felt. She pulled out the diagnosis. She showed it to her, them. She explained it to them. It took like 20 minutes. They looked at each other and they started bawling. Wow. And I started crying too because I ended up going, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm God. sorry. They down. said, no, honey, we're not crying because we're mad at you. It, it just sense. makes sense. Finally, we have words for how we felt and about you their the entire too. life. My yeah. nana, my na old lady, she's like, I always knew this, but I didn't know that there were words to go along with it, right. that it was possible. Yeah, and that it was even possible. Because right. it wasn't from that mind. day. I tried to unalive myself the couple days after my um, freshman year of high school ended. Immediately, we left the therapist. The next day, we threw away all my clothes. We went to thrift stores, we went to Ross, we went places, because we didn't have that much money. Yeah, but, that's the best place to go. You know, you know we I mean? bought me a whole new all girl clothes. Yeah. You were we went, my mama took me to a beauty school, got my hair fixed. That's awesome. I got highlights put in it, had it straightened out and was cut. It long? It was, I had been growing it out a little bit. It was sure like this. You were comfortable. Bought me makeup. Wow. And I had already had some makeup, but You're like, so blessed awesome. with that thing. Oh my God. Like. Yes. And my Nana, I couldn't figure out what name to be. What was your name over here? So that is a question, and I'm just telling you this, you didn't hurt my feelings, okay. but what we refer to as our old name is our dead name. Yeah, it's, dead. it's called our dead name, and we don't talk about that. Good. And just for future reference, if you ever do meet someone else like me, that's a question you don't, don't want to ask. Mm -hmm. Just because that's not who we are, 
that was that part person. of who people said we were, not who we ever were type of deal. Right. So, they made you out. Who, who, yeah, who they assigned us to be without us being that person. So my Nana named me Nina. She chose my name for me. And That's she right. told the rest of the family. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. they disowned us. Because I, I, I was the youngest, yeah, happened. I was the youngest of like seven grandchildren, and they all disowned my grandmother, even though, and that made my Nana and my mom very upset, but they supported me so much that they continued to support me from the day that I came out to my mom and my grandma. That's right. Six, I started the school year as Nina. For the How most part, was it, in school it was difficult. That? It was very difficult. Even afterwards, I brought a note from my therapist and from my mother to the school, and I gave it to all my teachers. And all the teachers already knew me very well. well most of them were good. supportive. There were a few that would refuse to call me by my new name, including the principal. The principal that first you day of school, your school. That first day of school, the principal sent out an email to all of the teachers. And this is, this is what he said. He said, and I'm gonna, when I say blank, I'm talking about my old name. Yeah. Blank is blank and he will use the boys' bathroom. Well, one of my favorite teachers carbon copied the email and sent it to my mom oh. because she was because very she was supportive like, of yeah. me. Yeah, wow, that's good. The next day, my mom brought up a lawyer, good. my social worker, good. Good. and because good. Obama, whether you like him or not for different yeah. reasons, when he was in office, he changed Title IX of the Constitution to include discrimination against gender identity as being against the federal government's yeah. policy. Therefore, any institution that received funding from the federal government was obliged to not discriminate right. against gender identity. And because he did that and because of whatever, she threatened to school the, sue the school district and she had grounds to. After that, I was allowed to go by Nina. Talking about what part of Texas? Houston. Even, allowed after, to, that you even after that, I wasn't allowed to wear a skirt until I had started hormones. So I started hormones in October. I did my own research and I found a doctor in Houston. And I had to have a letter from my primary doctor. I had to have a letter from my therapist and a psychiatrist. In order for me to start, to, in order to begin hormones, was it expensive to start that? It oh, was expensive because insurance wouldn't cover it, oh, well, and they else. refused to grade any papers that I had my new name on it. So I just wrote my last name on it, and even um, with the law, that's even, with, even the law, with them waking up every morning wanting nobody to do anything like that to them, do you know what I They I'm just saying? refused on the grounds of religious reasons. Oh my they God. refused. And um, so six months after that day in the summer, the one I came out to my mom and grandmother, it was January. Mm -hmm. And I had found a lawyer in Houston. And I can't give that many details out about it. It was a very difficult process and it was a very expensive process, but I got my name and gender changed right before I turned. Um, like you have a birth certificate now with not the birth certificate. Because yeah. in order to have the birth certificate changed, I would have had to have surgeries done. But okay, so on my driver's license and on my surgery, it's just... Well, so I can explain that to you in a second because that's another kind of thing. But I was able to have my social security card and my driver's license, the gender marker on it changed as well as my name changed wow. to Nina Alexandria, my yeah. last name. So within six months of me coming out, and I was that proactive, and my mom and my great. grandma supported and me that, that much. You were because you were like, if hey, you tried to do it. this later on, oh, it wouldn't have happened. It would have it never happened. To, on the, today in Texas, it wouldn't have happened. My mother died when I was just about to turn seventeen. Wow! And my uncles came in and put my nana in a nursing home. Oh no! I had been physically taking care of both of them from the time I was twelve years old. By physically, I mean I was doing almost all of the driving, all the grocery shopping, all the housework. I was taking them to doctor's appointments. I was giving them their medicine because they were both ill. And I would go in back and do it all over again. Right. And I think that played a because part of to why they were so supportive of me because they saw that I was giving up my whole childhood. And I was also in an early college academy, so I was going to the college to take all my classes wow. instead of high school right. for the most part. But if... 
I think that my mother knew she wasn't going to be around for very long. And she knew that, and my grandmother knew that in order for me to live a safe, relatively safe and healthy okay. and happy life, I, if I wouldn't have had my gender change mm -hmm. then, my life today would not be how it is. No. I would not have been able to drop out of high school and move to Florida and get my GED and start in hair school and get a job right out in while I was in hair school in a salon and that was traditional, that was full of traditionally conservative people, you know. I would not be able to have all the jobs that I've had. I would not be able to do hair. I mean, I could still do these things, but my name like and gym, my identity reason, being though. not changed would be so many roadblocks. I couldn't go to the airport and fly on a plane. Right. Wow. There's a lot of without being still, patted but... down. If my gym, if my name, I mean, even today, right. I'm patted down all the time at the airport because they do the scanner thing and they see something in my crotch. Oh, yeah. yeah. And they're like, oh my god. But if my name and gender wasn't changed, they would quit take me. They would question me. I would be opened up for discrimination. For why if I ever got pulled over by a police that officer, way. that's discrimination, an opening for discrimination. Whenever I would go and get ID'd at a bar or in a restaurant, right. that's an opening up for discrimination. Whenever I would have to file any kind of legal paperwork, that's open. So literally, but they knew and they loved me so much. Yeah, yeah. And, and they did that so that I could live my life. And this is why I see the world as it is right now, and it heart makes me heartbroken yeah. because there are so many adolescents and children like me yeah. that aren't able to have the privileges and the opportunities that I had that has led me to having such a healthy and happy life. If I, hadn't, if I would have waited just a few more years before I started hormones, I wouldn't look like this. Yeah. If I would have waited... Because we have bone platelets, and, you did it and the bone life. platelets fuse between the age of 18 and 22. Wow. Hormones will not affect the bone structure of anyone so after the bone platelets. Wow. These it's expensive, like, it's expensive, dangerous, invasive surgeries and that they, most people to, aren't. Like, they have oh, to, like, peel off your peel entire face. Your face to shave your they literally like to shave down your jaw. They cut you and they peel your face open. They take a chisel and they chisel away at your jaw. In order to do that Adam's apple, they slit you underneath your chin, peel your throat back, and take a chisel so and you, chisel That sounds you more that. You dangerous. dangerous. Yeah. When I did, it prevented me from having to have any kind of surgeries wow. unless I wanted them. It allowed me to grow breasts. It allowed me to grow hips. Yeah. I'm really tall, and I have long limbs, but it still allowed me to. That's not something that's being afforded to youth in the no. South right now. No especially in the state that we live, they're really finding it. And uh -huh. that's why this yeah, year it. I'm so thankful. Oh, yeah, the governor. Oh, you should see what that's why I'm so Ron thankful. Santos has been saying. Yeah, that's why I'm so thankful for Will to come into my life when he did and give yeah. me an outlet to talk about this oh, yeah. be, when this is all going so on. there's so many trans people that don't have the no. that they're not blessed to they're have, not blessed to have the parents. That have. And that's the biggest thing. That's why that's I say, and important. I know when we first started, um, being friends, whenever I would bring up my privilege, okay, you no. would you would say, "I was so new to it. Yeah. I didn't even know what you meant What I mean by it. privilege is that all of these things happened in my life when they happen to allow me to walk in here to right live now. as a woman right. in society so and and feel comfortable with how I look and not be judged and discriminated against. Right. Trans women of color, black trans women and trans women of color, are the highest have the highest rate of murder oh, yeah. and rape wow, of right. any yeah. other minority mm -hmm. in America. Um, trans women are routinely, brutally beaten, raped, yeah. drugged, murdered in so many states, and I think including ours, it's even a accepted legal defense called trans panic mm -hmm. for someone, if someone, if they even get to prosecution, yeah. mm -hmm. for their lawyer to say, they didn't know that they were trans, this yeah. woman was trans, and when they found out, they panicked and killed her. Or, or panicked like, and beat her up. Even, but, what's it called? When, a crime of passion? Yeah. When the outside doesn't match the inside, it's different for everybody. And what each trans person has to do medically in order to not have that feeling is different. Some people have to have surgery. No family to live with in Texas, so I moved here to live with my paternal grandmother. And she was accepting, as accepting as she could be. She didn't understand it, but she tried her best. 
she died of cancer. I took care of her. Wow. Then my grandmother in Texas, the one who raised me until she got sick when I was 12 with my mother, pretty much. Was, she was my second mother, the one who named me. Yeah. She died in 2020. It was discouraging, and, to say the least. Yeah, and then I had gotten married. and my ex did? Yeah, when I was 18. Oh, I met a man. How was that? It was horrible. But, but he, he did. He probably, oh, he, he knew. knew and, and he accepted it. accepted it. However, he would. He refused to tell his family. Absolutely. He refused to tell. He didn't want oh, me to tell anybody. I live life as a woman. Mm -hmm. But also, I I kind of identify like as a trans woman. We because were raised it's a big to part believe that, that it's one or the other point yeah. blank period. I Left also, right, though, you know what I, mean? I, I don't, you know, I say I'm a trans woman because that's a big part of my identity. In society, I'm a woman. Right. But when it comes to my life, me being a trans woman is just part, is a big part of my identity, a part of my story, a yeah. part of what I stand for, a part of what I try to represent. Yeah, that's true. You know, that so in different circles, in different settings, it changes a little bit. Mm -hmm. Dating gets hard. I bet. So with my ex-husband, he enjoyed that part of me. Yeah. And, but he refused. I think he so felt his insecure. Family knew that y'all had been married, but he didn't. They didn't know I was trans. But they his knew you, though. Did. They knew. They knew you, though. Like, yeah, they knew. Like, they knew. Y'all got married. We lived with my his mother for a little but bit. She, up in they New York. didn't know that. Part. They didn't know that part. They found out after, later on. They did hey. for five, almost six years until this summer. That's so crazy. I didn't touch a man, look at a man, date, or um, because I was traumatized. Oh, yeah. sure. I was. I couldn't make eye contact with a man in public besides a gay man. I couldn't make eye contact. You. I'm thankful for you. And I'm so glad that we met. And I'm thankful for this outlet that I'm able to tell my story. And I'm thankful um, for Uber, but this is the only time I'm going to say that. I'm thankful for Uber, too. Just for that. I'm thankful for Uber, too. Because <laughs> um, other than that, okay, okay, that's a different story for a different all day. Right. But we're not all, <laughs> it's not all, like, sadness all the time. No. We're actually very happy people. Yeah, and I shared in this video some really yeah. tragic things that happened to me. But, it's but that just, doesn't, that's not who I am. No. That's just the story that I've been through. The past is the past. And I think that I'm proud of myself. You could have gone down a lot. I could have gone down a lot of different deep, dark paths. And I could have been a resentful person. I could have been a bitter person. I could be a hateful person. Yes. But I'm not. Determined. Bad obviously. things happen to a Good lot of people. people. Bad things happen to everybody. Yeah, period. But it's up to us as a person. It's up to us to choose how we let that change us how we let that affect us, how we treat people. how we treat people afterwards, what we learn from it, what we take from it. That's always our choice. We don't have a choice of what happens to us, but we always have a choice of how we let that affect us, how we let that change us, how we let that teach us. You okay. can grow from That's why I say I regret or... nothing. I, I wouldn't Me change too. my life. I wouldn't change a single thing that happened in my life. Um, because I learned from it, because I grew from it. Yeah. Because, like I said, everything had to happen for me to be sitting here right now. And, and I'm, I'm thankful so grateful. To be sitting here right now. And you know, we're and we're breathing. We're breathing. We're alive. I'm alive. You know what I said. You know what I said in one of my, or I think it was, the video I was just talking about to you. I was saying in there like it's just, I'm I'm thankful for our brain. Mm -hmm. They were even able to have these wonderful thoughts. Do you know what I mean? Like, just able to think, period. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it be such cognizant being. Spread the love. Spread the love. Spread the love. If you get and any honestly, message. You are beautiful. Whoever you are watching right now. You are beautiful. You need, in the great words of Carol King, um, have you ever heard her song, Beautiful? I don't know. It was my mom's favorite song. I don't know. I'm really bad with my memory, but if I heard it right now, I would. It I goes. Would tell you. you want me to sing a little song? Sing it. It goes a little something like this. You've got to get up every morning with a smile on your face and show the world all the love in your heart. Cause yes. people gonna treat you better. You're gonna find, yes, you will, that you're beautiful. As you feel. I like that. That was yeah. good. 
Bravo. I wish I knew that song, but I don't know. But I'm glad that you sang it to me. Yeah, it's a good song. And only me. And happiness is a choice. And it really is. And you can kindness either is a choice. Stay, you, kindness counts. Right. And you can stay down. Or you can rise. And guess what? Hope floats. Hope floats. Mm-hmm. Did you make that up? Mm-mm. We'll say you did. I'm just playing. Hope floats, babies. But I, I love say, you. Lena I love you guys. You. I love you guys so much. Thank you for sitting around and sticking and watching my little... Long they do. Out, so. They do, girl. They do. They Please do. comment if you have questions. Comment too, down comment. below. 